Hey there everyone, I'm Round the Wheel and this is Mega Man 1. This is the first step in our sequential journey through all six NES Mega Man games. And Mega Man 1 is one of two NES Mega Man games that does not begin with a cinematic intro sequence, the other one being Mega Man 3. And Mega Man 1 is mostly remembered for two things, one being really weird and two being really hard. I would debate the difficulty of the game, it's not as difficult as most people say, although it does have some features that kind of give it a weird snowball effect and things can get very hard very quickly if you get in a tight spot but it's debatable it's arguable we'll talk about it and the other thing is that this game is really weird and it's only weird in that it does a lot of things that you would normally consider a standard operating procedure for the Mega Man series it does them a little bit differently this game didn't quite have the formula in place yet so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start now and we're gonna see the first of those really weird things which, if you have ever played an NES Mega Man game, you probably think there are eight Robot Masters. But in this game, there were only six. And of these six, we are going to start with Bomb Man. We're going to do one stage a day. That's to give each Robot Master his due attention that he deserves. Alright, we get 100,000 points for beating Bomb Man today. Bomb Man, and yeah, you will see that this game actually has a score. This game keeps score. That is a weird holdover from arcade days of yore. The score doesn't matter, it doesn't accomplish anything, it doesn't do anything for us, it's just kind of there. Because points were a thing that people did. The only thing you really get from it is bragging rights, and this is the only Mega Man game to have a score. It doesn't go toward achievements or anything like that, it's just really strange and unusual. And another thing that's strange and unusual is Mega Man himself. And some of the power-ups he picks up. You can see Mega Man. Mega Man looks the same as he ever did, except the only thing different is he has this kind of yellowy, jaundiced look. As do most of the things in this game that are actually supposed to be sort of white. Like energy pickups. The energy pickups also look different than they would in later games. This is not really the game that got Mega Man off to his start. That would be Mega Man 2. Because you see, on TV tropes, you have trope makers and trope codifiers. And the trope makers are the people who originated the thing, whereas the trope codifiers... Holy cow. This is Sniper Joe right here. He usually gets me a few times before I'm able to kill him. And we're just gonna, for the most part, ignore these little bullet dudes. But yeah, the trope maker is always whoever originated something, whereas the trope codifier is the person who made everything standard and made it what you know it as today. And Mega Man 1 was not the codifier, it was the maker. And I almost just took a hit and got knocked into a pit there. Most of the differences between this game and other Mega Man games are strictly mechanical uh, in nature. For instance, these spikes here. You know that spikes kill you instantly in a Mega Man game. I'm going to run away from you now. Not even bother to turn around and shoot you. But in most games... Spikes will kill you instantly unless you happen to fall on them after being hit. But in this game, if you happen to fall on them after getting hit, you usually won't die immediately. But if your invincibility runs out, then you will. In this game, there is no such leeway, so we're going to avoid spikes like the plague. And let's see if I can get out of here without taking too many hits. Yikes, these little hamburger guys just keep coming in a loop until you get to... Sniper Joe here. There's our first one-up of the Mega Man series. Our little yellow-skinned, slightly unhealthy one-up. This is definitely worth waiting for, because they are kind of stingy with one-ups in this game, as opposed to in other Mega Man games. We don't want to go too far over, because then Sniper Joe would respawn. That's a feature of all Mega Man games, which is the enemies respawn on a dime. If you turn around, and you go even one pixel away from where an enemy was supposed to spawn, they will come back, even after you've killed them. One of the more annoying things about the Mega Man series in general, but when you add it to the things that are annoying about this game, it just kind of piles on. And here we are at the boss already. You'll see two little doors here. That's not standard for the Mega Man series. You'll usually see one door, and behind that door, in most Mega Man games, is a one-screen hallway with another door leading to the boss. But in this game, there is a little foyer with some enemies between the first door and the door leading the boss, which I think that's kind of neat. That's actually one quirk of this game I would like to see revived. I'm not going to bother shooting at these guys. I'm just going to drop on my ladder whenever I feel it necessary to do so. Okay. And once I fall down here, we'll be at Bomb Man. Bomb Man is one of the easier enemies to destroy with the Mega Buster. And I do him first for logistical reasons. You can actually repeat levels in this game. 
a feature that would get revived later on. But, okay, let's walk away from you. You are very athletic, Bomb. Ow, you don't want bosses to jump on you. It always hurts more when the boss hits you than when their weapons do. Holy crap. Yeah, sure, let's just stand there and uh, get gnawed by that. He's a very good jumper, but he is not too great at throwing the bombs. Maybe he should not throw overhand so much. Bomb man, you are pretty terrible at bomb throwing. And anytime you beat a level, you pick this thing up. This is also a Mega Man 1 only feature. Normally when you beat a boss in a Mega Man game, you teleport away and you get a weapon and all that. And there's also no cinematic featuring the weapon you get. You just, it's taken for granted that you have Bomb Man's weapon now. And our little pellets that we collected added up to a point bonus, which we got on top of the 100,000 for beating Bomb Man. So yeah, already you can see there are a lot of weird and strange things about this game. And they don't quite add up to what you know is Mega Man. And they haven't too terribly gotten in our way yet either. But uh, if we wanted, we could go back to Bomb Man stage. We wouldn't have to fight him again. But using the boss order I'm using, we have no reason to revisit levels, which is nice and convenient. So next time, we will take on Guts Man. Some people prefer to start with Cut Man, but you have to repeat stages that way. Going with Bomb Man and then Guts Man next, we won't have to repeat any levels, and we'll be on our way. See you guys next time.